550 index. This is your last call. 550 index. We need you to the lanes as we move into 650. Tony Jarvis and Henry George Jr. coming up now from Lynchcombe, Maryland is Henry George Jr. Tony Jarvis from Millis, Massachusetts. The 1966 Mustang in crimson red, 363 cubic inch small block. Henry George, the street cleaner, 1969 Super B. Jarvis creeps his fastback Mustang ahead. He's ready to go. Nice wheels up launch for George out of Maryland. Not going to waste the trip all the way down here to Florida. And it will be Tony Jarvis, 6.48.7 at 102 miles an hour. A double breakout win as Henry George put a fender on Jarvis, but went 6.44.4. Went too quickly, went below the 6.50 index and loses. Chris Gwelly and Pat Nanny coming up. So Guelli, perennial hitter here at Bradenton Motorsports Park, that 1975 Vega, and Pat Nanny. Nanny may take Guelli out here with an 011 light, and Nanny does it. 6.52 with an 011 reaction time. Puts Pat Nanny and his Dakota truck on to the next round. Chris Guelli eliminated in this second round of racing. 6.49.3 at 95 miles an hour for Guelli. Not good enough to stop the blue truck of Nanny. Dan Boldry and Faith Frost. Steve Canizzo drove this car to an event win at the Snowbird Outlaw Nationals, the finale of which was handled this weekend. Now Faith Frost is in the seat. Five fifty index cars. Thank you for making the trip up here. I believe the remainder of our six fifty cars have come into the lanes. Faith Frost is in a spot of trouble here as Dan Boldry on the starting. Oh, Faith Frost gets the win. A double breakout. Boldry was 045 and Frost was 235. And Boldry breaks out, taking two tenths worth of stripe, runs 649 2. Faith Frost moves on to the next round as the parade of trailers, rigs, and RVs heads to the gate. Racers returning to points north, south, east, and west after their weekend. Matt Adams and Aaron Cole. Aaron Cole in the Mopar, Matt Adams. Over there on the right-hand side of the Chevrolet will be Cole, 668 by four ten thousandths of a second. Aaron Cole advances on to the next round. Scott Travers and Jim McMillan come up now. Pro Mod, Pro Mod quarterfinals. Eminem Transmission Outlaw Pro modified to the staging lanes, please. As Scott Travers and Jim McMillan get ready to square up. If you are looking for a U.S. Street Nationals t shirt, hoodie, Hat, whatever we have left is at the Modern Outlaw trailer in the vendor area. Once again, the Modern Outlaw trailer in the vendor area, all remaining U.S. Street Nationals gear that we have left to sell is over there. Jim McMillan just took Scott Travers to the cleaners on the starting line, goes 655 at 96 miles an hour, a 39 light for McMillan, much more than he needed, took it to the house. Scott Travers goes 664 at 109 in the loss. Once again, if you didn't hear me, we have one made a call for Pro Mod quarterfinals to the lanes and two, if you're looking for U.S. Street Nationals t-shirt, hoodie, whatever we have left is at the Modern Outlaw trailer in the Vendor Village area.
Next up will be our quickest of the index categories, 550 index cars coming up. A small group left in this class. A couple of 650 cars have suited up. Made that final call for 550. Some of our 650 racers, again, just getting final suited up over there. Thank you to the Outlaw 632 crowd for coming in. And Pro Modify, the eight remaining cars. We need you. Eminem Transmission, Outlaw Pro Mod to the lanes. Jimmy Harrell and Bob Walsh. I believe this is going to be a Bob Walsh competition single. 87S10 over there in red. Unfortunately, Jimmy Harrell unable to make this round of competition because we're on the ladder. Walsh then gets a solo. Jumped up on the tire, spun a little bit, came bebopping down, and Bob Walsh goes to the finish line, 653-2 at 105 miles an hour. And that'll bring up the second and final competition single of 650 index, Andre Nunez. San Juan, Puerto Rico is 1982 S10. Andre been with Fuel Tech a long time, represents them in the sportsman drag racing world. And Nunez goes 755 8 at 103. You heard the truck kind of return to idle there after pulling a wheelie. I'm sure, he'll be checking into that between rounds. 550 index, and we need our eight remaining pro mods. Pro mods to the lanes, please. Bill Denny and Robert Jackson. Jackson, the red, 1971 Nova Supersport, and Bill Denny, this small block, manually shifted, 78 Pino. This thing screams to the moon, and it will pull wheelies on the gear changes. One of the most entertaining cars on the property. Watch this little thing. And Bill Denny heard him stuff that thing. Oh, he gave it back. Bill Denny had him covered by a country mile in the starting line. Denny was 27 on the tree. Jackson was 100, and he lifted at the top end. Bill Denny runs 545 to Jackson's 548. He actually didn't lift, I guess, early enough. He double breakout, but, man, Bill Denny's car is great. And this will be a solo here for Jeff Mount. He's actually the 650 index by. So that puts Capper officially on 650 index. Mount runs a 642.8 at 107. And here we are in 550. Jerry Norton and Gary Varney. 85 Thunderbird. 
Varney's car is not just painted to look like an ex-Bob Glidden car. It is an ex-Bob Glidden car. Jerry Norton's 27 Ford Roadster. Another very consistent long-running machine here at Bradenton Motorsports Park. And Jerry Norton can wheel it. Norton goes out there and goes 557 with a 008 light. Stealing Gary Varney's lunch money on the starting line. Varney was 106 to Norton's 008, and that was the end of it. 549-6, 125 for the D-Bird. Joe Sharp and Carl Mitchell. Mitchell already has won a 550 championship trophy to his name this weekend, having put the capper on the Snowbird Outlaw Nationals in his 1979 Mercury Zephyr. And Joe Sharp driving that 2013 at Copo Camaro. The factory drag machine based out of Bloomington, Illinois. Matt Bell, Larry Salvatore, his coaches. You see Matt Bell's got his phone out there like a proud papa. See if Schrapp could take care of business. Sharp rather could take care of business against Mitchell. Sharp did have the starting line covered, and at the stripe, it is going to be Carl Mitchell. Double breakout. Double breakout win as Sharp took the stripe, going 541-8. So we got to the finish line first. Ran under 550 and loses. Mitchell was right behind him at 542-8 and gets the win. Jordan Hoagland and Eric Walkup. Hoagland, the 1967 Camaro, 632 cubic inch engine. And Eric Walkup, a 598 cube motor in that 64 Chevy 2 on the right side. That car is another one that people just drool over. It is so well turned out. Both cars are beautiful. Walkup's car is this next level over there. Double 09, he can wheel it, and it is going to be walk up. 544 9 at 127. Another double breakout. Hoagland runs 541, taking two 100s worth of stripe. Got there by a car length, broke out ahead of Eric Walk up. This is our final 550 index car, which means the big heads up. Harry Knuckle Beast of All Lost 632 going to be coming up next, and final call for Pro Mod to the Lanes. Mike Decker Jr., your last Pro Mod car. We'd like to see in the lanes. Mike Decker Jr., need you into the lanes, please. And Dave Wolfen, car moved around a little bit there at the top end. Goes 546-4 at 123.58. And with that, we move an Outlaw 632. Jacob Nama going to be the first car down the racetrack. He is the buy in the category. Number one qualifier in the class went All right, Jacob Nauman. This track has a lot of bite to it right now. We'll find out how much of it he can use here. There are seven cars in this round of Outlaw 632. So we'll set us up for a semifinal here, and we know Jacob Nauman will be part of it. Beautiful Chevy Nova. Nitrous injected 632 inch big block. 
Ooh, and he flamed it out. You saw the little puff of fire come out of the hood scoop there as the engine sneezed up through the intake manifold. So on a buy run, all you have to do is stage the car under its own power. So he wins. And thankfully, there is no uh, residual fire or problems under there. And they're going to have Nauman, I believe, try to fire it up and drive it down. The reason for that is the car has to cross the scales after he's trying to make sure it is of legal weight. All right, so a parade lap for Nauman here in this round. We need Pro 275, Pro 275, quarterfinal action, Pro 275 to the lanes, please. So now it's going to be Kyle Salmonen and Jason Ventura. Salmonen coming up in the 2003 Cavalier, Nelson Power. Ventura out of Pompano Beach, Florida, the 1970 Camaro. The X Machine. HRE, engine builder of choice for Jason Ventura, according to his hood scoop. Pro 275, Pro 275 to the staging lanes, please. And both cars stop almost in perfect unison down a couple of hundred feet into their trip. Backing up here to the starting line as they are. So Jason Ventura, the number five qualifier, Salmon at number four. These cars ran both in the mid 420 bracket. Salmon and his lightning quick on a starting line. So he has a very small performance advantage outright over Ventura. He also tends to be one of the snappiest levers in the class, so we'll find out what Jason has for him on the other side of the racetrack. Pro Mods rolling up to the front of the lanes. We need Pro 275. Pro 275, please. Jason Ventura goes red. Ventura goes red. Salmonen shakes the tires, but Kyle Salmonen is on to the semifinal round because of Ventura, the 094 red light start. Salmonen rolls to a 775. Meanwhile, Ventura makes a clean 432 shot after the red light. Pat Patterson and Chris Holdorf coming up now. Number two and seven qualifiers, Holdorf, the DeWitt Custom Concrete, Pontiac GTO, and Pat Patterson. The public enemy Camaro on the left-hand side. Enslin Racing, Bandfinger Racing Products, the sponsors for Pat Patterson. So Holdorf purging the nitrous into the atmosphere. Jamie Miller, the tuner, standing in front of the race car with his traditional red ball cap on. Be a big one here for Pat Patterson as Chris Holdorf, a stalwart in Outlaw 632 competition at these big meets. 
One last purge of the night just very quickly for Holdorf. Patterson's wasting no time to go in either. Holdorf bought himself 300s at the starting line, and he still had 13 thousandths of it left at the finish line. 419, 4 at 170 beats a 430 at 166. It was actually 200s at the starting line. Holdorf was 68 to Patterson's 89. Patterson began to eat into it a little, but did not have near enough drag strip to catch Holdorf after giving him that much of an advantage. Final pair of Outlaw 632, round number two. Mike Fiorelli and Mark Hoagland. Hoagland gets back on the gas during the burnout, straighten the car out. Mike Fiorelli, 68 Camaros, 632 cubic inch engine. Fiorelli's car, one of the most colorful in the category. Hoagland's car, very nicely finished in black. 2015 body on the tubular chassis. Chassis engineering race car, FTI torque converter supporting Mark Hoagland. Cape Coral, Florida, home for Hoagland. You can see the Cape Collision logo subtly placed on the wing of the back of the car. I'm guessing this guy might be in the body business the way that that uh, machine is finished. The black paint is like a mirror. And Fiorelli purging the nitrous one last time. Going to try to get around a hitter here in Mark Hoagland as we finish out the second round of Outlaw 632 with four cars remaining after this pair. Wow. Man alive. That's the second time this round. Not sure what Mike Fiorelli saw, but he left a day before the tree was activated. Mark Hogan went out and ripped the tire, and he runs a 629 and goes to the semifinal round. Tough break there for Mike Fiorelli as he could have won that race handily. The car made a clean run to the finish line, but Hoagland will take it because in this sport, you take it any way you can get it. He has a win light, and Mark Hoagland is in the semifinals of Outlaw 632. And that means it will be time for the M&M Transmission Outlaw Pro Mod category coming up next. Presented by Fuel Tech and PJS Racing. PJS Racing engines, of course, based in Weatherford, Texas. Brandon Pez and his crew building horsepower of all shapes and sizes down there. Innovators and industry leaders as they are. Limited drag radial. Limited drag radial. We need the grade eight. The grade eight of limited drag radial. Outlaw, or rather, Pro 275. You should be there. Limited drag radial. The eight remaining cars. Bring them in. All right. Stan Shelton and Travis Harvey. I do believe that Stan Shelton is a guy who can stand in that same small ring with Harvey when it comes to the starting line. Consistent and consistently quick. These are the two things that Stan Shelton has proven himself to be over the last couple of seasons of NHRA quarter mile drag racing in the pro mod world. And Travis Harvey is quick and he is a snappy lever, whether he's driving at the big dog at Piedmont, whether he's driving some grudge car, whether he's out here in a pro mod, he adapts himself to whatever equipment he's sitting in. So Stan Shelton gets the first wave ahead. And they move in unison. 2017 Camarita, 1967 Mustang, formerly raced by Mike Bealey over here on the left-hand side of the racetrack.
Stan Shelton's going to the semifinals. 360, 30 at 209. 48 reaction time for Stan, a 42 light for Harvey. They had identical 932, 60 foot times, right down to the third digit to the right of the decimal place. But between the 60 and the 330, Shelton stretched his legs. Harvey got a little bit loose, and it's going to be Stan Shelton completing the trip and going to the semis. Harvey coasted his way through a 4707 at only 107 miles an hour. Eric Gustafson and Mike Decker will be coming up next as we have called Limited Drag Radio. Limited Drag Radio to the staging lanes, please. LDR to the lanes. Gustafson and Decker. A roaring burn out there for Gustafson. The Coast Packing Company, 69 Camaro, Lions Custom Motorsports, Pro Charger, Noonan Race Engineering, PTP Racing, Hall Tech, Jimmy Rector, Quick Drive, Liberty Gears. Got a laundry list of folks out there. And for Mike Decker Jr. at Woodstock, Maryland, it's Decker Salvage, Auto Fab Race Cars, Tie Drive, and Wild Motorsports, the main contributing factors here to this car and their program. Shane Stack, we need you. Shane Stack, come on to the staging lanes, please. Shane Stack. We've called LDR, and I think you're the only one we're missing. Shane Stack to the lanes. I mean, Thrill Billy is a better nickname than Prompt Billy. We get it, but we still need you to the staging lanes on time. We totally get it. All right, Eric Gustafson now creeping ahead. Be a pretty wild story if Eric's able to make his way to a semifinal in his return appearance, especially in a field of cars with this level of quality and depth. Hands of the drivers. Everybody's watching. Man, a big wheels up run there for Decker. Decker goes a 363. Gustafson will be sick to his stomach. He was red, and he threw away a 362-4 at 207.08. Had he left on time, Gustafson had a very good chance of winning that drag race. But for Mike Decker Jr., what another beautiful run. You saw the car come off the starting line at 944.60 foot time. But, man, it's like they locked the converter out there, and that thing just climbs up on its hind legs, and it is gone. 363.8 at 209 for Decker, whose car did wander a little bit toward the center of the racetrack, but he still had plenty of room to work, setting the front end down at high speed from that wheel stand. The one thing Eric Gustafson knows is that he has a very capable low 360s race car, and his return to the sport has been one that has been successful by every measure. Just a tough break there in a red light. Ken Cartuccio and Lyle Barnett coming up now. This is a great side-by-side -side matchup. Your 2023 U.S. Street Nationals Pro Mod winner in Ken Cartuccio out of Wallingford, Connecticut. Your 2023 Snowbar Snowbird Outlaw Nationals Pro Mod winner in Lyle Barnett out of Robbins, North Carolina. Cartuccio had a killer reaction time in his last run yesterday. Lyle did not. Lyle was a very unlyle like 90 on the tree last night. He did manage to get the round win. I'm going to imagine he probably slept with a mouthpiece in last night so he didn't grind his teeth down to the gums thinking about that 90. That's the type of stuff that eats a guy like Lyle Barnett alive, and he's not going to do it twice. And I think everybody on the other side of the racetrack has full knowledge of that, especially the guy sitting behind the wheel of that gorgeous 1969 Camaro.
MacFab Beadlocks, the business that Lyle Barnett operates each day. Ken Cartuccio in the business of moving automobiles in bulk in the trucking industry. A true all-star pairing right here. Two very good drivers and two exceptionally good cars. Both drivers now pre-staged. Lyle left first, but Ken's going to finish first. And how about a 360-1-3? 208 miles an hour. Cartuccio, 047, 914 short time. 242 to the split. And a win light on the left side of the drag strip. For Barnett, it's an 023 light, and shortly thereafter, the tires started to shake. 399.8 with a pedal job at 185 miles an hour means that Lyle Barnett, well, valiant in his effort, is eliminated, and that leaves us one pair left in this round of Pro Modified. Limited drag radial, everybody should be there, we do believe. Which means that on deck is going to be X275. X275, you're on deck, and that... Uh, Request for your presence is going to be coming pretty quick. Mark Mickey and Todd Tuttero now. Final pair. Who will be the fourth entrant in the semifinal round of m, &M Transmission Pro Modified presented by Fuel Tech and presented by PJS Racing? We have seen pretty, let's call it even power adder matchups. And this is the first time we're going to see that big mile an hour spread if things go right on both sides of the racetrack. Mark Mickey's car been running between 215 and 222 miles an hour the entire weekend. Todd Tuttero's car being a screw blower combination, we should expect that car to be somewhere in the 210 mile an hour range. So the only way you're going to get around Mark Mickey if you're a Todd Tuttero, you know you're not going to win the back half of the racetrack, so you sure got to win the front half of it, and that includes the starting line. We have seen some red lights this round. We have seen some tire shake this round. I haven't seen a whole shot yet. Could be. Could be. It's like that thing when you're watching your favorite team on TV and the guy's like, well, they've never lost a game when they've been up 20 points in the fourth quarter. It's like, oh, no, never say that out loud. <laughs> so Mark Mickey answers back the revs with some revs of his own here. Neither guy has moved into pre-stage yet. Okay. Tedero finally pulls it into gear and inches ahead. Tuttero's out. Here comes Mickey. It's Mickey. 359-0 beats a 359-8. 17 thousandths at the finish line stripe. And look at the speed differential. 222 miles an hour for Mickey. 210 for Todd Tuttero. And it played out exactly as this movie has played out so many times before. Tuttero has four hundredths of a second all by his lonesome out there at 60 feet. He still has four hundredths of a second at the 330 foot mark. And then, uh-oh, the last 100 feet of the drag race, he looks over, and a blue streak comes flying by. Mark Mickey goes into the semifinal round with a highly impressive 359 at 222.07. And now it's time for us to prep for radial tires. We have Pro 275 in, limited drag radial in, and now we need X275. X275 to the lanes, please. A great way to kick off our afternoon here. The index racing was great. The Outlaw 632 cars really let set up the Pro Mod stage very well. Our radial cars are in the lanes right now. We've just called X275. We're going to get this thing tightened up, tacked up, and sprayed up for radial tires. Grab yourself a beer. Grab yourself an event T-shirt over at Modern Outlaw. And we'll be back in just a couple minutes with the quarterfinals of our radial heads-up categories.
Carlton Thompson. Carlton Thompson, we need you to the staging lanes, please. And, of course, I'm advocating people drink on a Sunday at the drag strip. What, are we, what am I doing here? If I'm not doing that, I'm not, literally not doing my job. Hey guys, happy Sunday. It is Bradenton Motorsports Park, the final day of the U.S. Street Nationals. Kind of feels like we've drugged this thing on, but we're actually just a bit ahead of schedule here. It's a beautiful day, rained overnight. Wade and them got the track absolutely phenomenal. If you just missed that first round of Pro Mod of the day, you absolutely missed out. And I cannot not mention first things first. It would be remiss. Side by side 59s to start race day. You just said it. It's blower air today. 
Yeah, definitely, absolutely. Mother Nature's helping. The racetrack conditions, temperature helps. You just saw Tuttero lay down some of the most impressive screw bow numbers that we've seen all week up front in, in legal trim, right? In legal trim. Uh, and to get just nicked that much by Mark Mickey. Uh, but Mark, he stepped his game up. If Mark's 60 again like he was last night, it's a it's a no-brainer. It's a done deal. You uh, you saw the the Gustafson train come to a conclusion with the red light. Uh, not sure what Eric was looking at. It, his number started. His red light started with a one. Mm -hmm. So uh, you know, as they say in racer speak, he left on nothing. But uh, that was a uh, just a round that kind of caught everybody off guard. We had some upsets, and then we had some that were not upsets. But we had some great performances on the scoreboards. We both kind of stuck our foot in our mouth there. You picked Harvey. We both picked Harvey. I said Derek Ward was going to be the dark horse. Lyle was my pick. Everything's out right there. And I even said this morning to you on the starting line, whoever leaves first with Ken Cartuccio and Lyle Burnett's going to win that race. That did not happen. Did you expect to see Lyle Burnett go up in a shake? Well, if you started the round and watched Travis Harvey, he was the first pair out and got out in the middle in that 330 area uh, to, you know, if you want to call it 150, 180 foot area, and it just went into shake. And then it became a trend in the right lane uh so i was kind of shocked that that the you know quote unquote pro line camp didn't go to the left side of the racetrack uh and ken was on a rail and so uh i'm sure you know that's not uh that's definitely not how the tidwell camp steve petty and the crew drew it up but i think i would have it being that far back i think i would have swapped lanes i can't remember without the paperwork i don't remember who had lane choice uh whether ken had it and lyle had to have that lane no matter what but either way uh, yeah we're we're both looking uh uh stupid as usual i guess not as usual i called the world series of promo but Talk to me a little bit about what's behind us here. You know we call that history, right? Yeah, like just because you called it in 23, no, that's behind us. What have you done for me lately? No, you know what always is correct is when you are correct, and that stuff lives forever. So uh, it's still 1-0 <laughs> on that front. So I don't know what kind of Fagazi situation you got oh, going there on there. We go. Good job. <laughs> anyway, we got some cars behind us in the lanes. What do you think's going to happen here? Right now, I think the radio world's been put on notice in Pro 275. Mark Woodruff and, and team. It is for real. Uh, their consistency, Jason's Collins, they're still hanging around. Uh, Mark's got a big, tough competition this round with uh, Charlie Cooper. But again, that's the PTP program. But you've got you got the race and resolution guys, Salemi's camp. They're over here now with Mark Woodruff, and they're here just making great laps. But uh, I don't know. Everybody that we talked to for the week, Brylan Holder, like if you start looking through the points, these are the guys in Pro 275 that you expect to see late in the rounds. Uh, so this is going to be another one of those rounds. Radio cars don't like the sunshine. They don't like the sunshine, but they do like cool track temps. And we have a little bit of that going on here today. So Pro 275, I think, is going to definitely step up. That are better than uh, their best from throughout the week. We just had a nice little hero shot from one of the stars of the class there in that beautiful little yellow machine there. But today we're going to have a smooth, smooth race day, rest of race. Because we've got Wade, we've got Victor, we've got everybody doing what they need to do. Best of the best are still in competition. We're going to mosey through this and we're going to crown champions, and we have a chance. Yeah, for him to be U.S. Street last year in 23 and then be able to pull it off right now, especially, in the, and we talked about it in his, his interview last night, like, he did. He just wanted to golf <laughs> before they went back, you know, went back north. And, uh, I, you know, they bought the holy water by a pallet, I guess, and poured it all over that car and got whatever kind of demons they had to exercise out of it. And it has been nasty since Thursday. And I know my The fuel station will close in 40 minutes, which will put it right at 3 p.m.
winning doesn't just happen. You have to engineer it. You have to test it and make it better than it was the last time. Our engineers have the passion to create the parts you need the way you need them to be. Again, and again, and again. We've led this game for over 40 years, and we design, refine, and perfect every valve train part worthy of the winner circle. It's all about feel. And this car, I love this car, but not when it hesitates. So I was looking for better performance. That's why I went with an Edelbrock AVS2 carburetor. No hesitation. The Edelbrock warranty. Great throttle response. Now when I punch it... <laughs> it moves. Edelbrock. Charge forward. Unleash your engine with Adrenaline Racing Oils, 100% PAO based oil. The Adrenaline R Series is designed to unlock extra horsepower. Free up your engine to perform its best. Top performing oils with FR3 nanocarbon technology. The same friction reducer used by top racers. Designed for any engine. Lab formulated, dyno tested, track proven. Hot Shot Secret, powered by science. Winning doesn't just happen. You have to engineer it. You have to test it and make it better than it was the last time. Our engineers have the passion to create the parts you need the way you need them to be. Again, and again, and again. We've led this game for over 40 years, and we design, refine, and perfect every valve train part worthy of the winner's circle. We drive tech. We drive the industry. Going beyond the limits and advancing forward. A versatile all-in-one solution. We're here for you every step of the way. And that's why you see Fuel Tech everywhere. Filters, fueling champions. Yo. All right, a little patching over there on the right side. You can see finish work on the tractor. Some more glue will hit the surface. We have all of our radial classes in the staging lanes. 
We're going to have our final in the no-time trucks once we get all of our radial cars kind of underway. Then we'll call our no-time cars in, or limited 235, and go right back through the order. Twenty twenty four US Street Nationals, all the actions always on the racetrack unless the sun goes down and then we seem to have some action happen that is unfortunate for Brandon Pez and his team. Brandon, uh, as everybody at home is kind of taking a look here, what uh what has transpired in, in your pits? Well, I'm not hundred percent uh, sure. All I know is I got a lot of phone calls this morning and uh saying my car's wedged up against the trailer and I was like, okay, and I get out here and it's wedged up against the trailer. Uh, obviously, someone partied a little too much last night and and lost control. I assume a golf cart. It uh, there's uh, someone's push bar pole under the car. The uh, there's blood next to the car, so I assume uh, someone flew off when they hit it and got hurt. And I don't know. It's just someone partying too hard, and um, you know, fuck ups happen. Just come forward, say, "Hey, I fucked up," you know, and, uh, and we'll talk it out, you know. But it ain't nothing too bad. I'll be back at the World Series Pro Mod. It's all mainly cosmetic. I haven't took the wheels off or anything, but I, everything looks like it's fixable, no problems. So we'll see. Brandon, we're, I mean, it's one thing in the drag race community, right? Like, and I know, I, you know, put your stuff in a trailer, people's, gonna, you know, whatever. But the other part about our drag racing community is the humanity piece of it. Like, we're all out here. We're all good-hearted people. We all have great consciences and stuff. I got to think at some point throughout the course of this day, after the hangover subsides, somebody's gonna go okay we got we need we need to reach out we need to we need to own up to to what we've done because that's just that's just the way the drag racing community is uh, do, you, do you feel inside that that's gonna happen or do you feel like this is gonna get something that you're never gonna figure out exactly where it came from I, I feel I'm I agree with you I think that you know number one someone got hurt right so either I don't know how bad it's they had to go to the hospital or, or if they are passed out in a motorhome somewhere or, or whatever, but uh, I'm pretty confident. I mean, you know, drag racing, it's a lot of people talk. It's it, you, ain't, you can't keep no secrets out here, so it'll come out, and uh, hopefully, you know, sooner than later, uh, I'm assuming if they're this messed up to do something like this, they're probably just passed out right now. And um, and when they do wake up and realize if they even remember what they did, uh, they'll they'll come and talk to me. I absolutely 100% hope so. Absolutely, folks. Brandon Pez, his whole entire family, wife and son, Cole, PJS Racing Team. They're gonna load back up, head to Texas, and uh, as Brandon said, they're gonna come forward. 
But I, I want, as a racer, as also on Air Talent, I hear a lot of people out there on social media complaining about, you know, the golf cart passes and why there's so many restrictions sometimes at these races. Here sits a $300,000 race car that's been damaged by more than likely somebody that probably didn't need to be on a golf cart and probably didn't need to have a golf cart on property. Sometimes the risk is not worth the reward. So when you want to start complaining, sometimes you got to look in the mirror. U.S. Street Nationals from Bradenton Motorsports Park. We're going to get back on track soon. Brandon Pest, they'll be back. Pro 275, the next category out this weekend, presented by PST Drive Shafts and Proline Racing. Precision Drive Shaft Tech or Precision Shaft Technologies, the worldwide leader in quality drive shafts. From NHRA Pro Mod World Champions to Resto Mods, trust the most recognized name for your next build, Precision Shaft Technologies. We drive winners. Find PST Technologies online at pstds.com. That is pstds.com, or follow them on Facebook. That is Precision. Shaft Technology. And Proline Racing, of course, represented here, the Ball Ground Georgia-based company that has been such a name in making horsepower in a variety of different drag racing classes from the Pro Modified world into the radial tire world, multiple combinations, and certainly a legacy of success. Hundreds and hundreds of race wins up and down the world of drag racing. Proline Racing continues to be a massive presence in this space in the sport of drag racing and integral in the execution of the Radial Outlaw Series, among other involvement they have. Big thanks to Proline for their continued involvement here at BMP with the U.S. Street Nationals. So Mark Woodruff and Charlie Cooper as we kick things off here with the final eight. In Pro 275, Willie Dog is up here in the timing tower. He's been out about all over the place. Don't cringe. Turn the microphone on, man. What's happening? Oh, yeah, Mark Woodruff with that rooster head on it. Made famous. <laughs> Made famous by the guy standing to my left. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. That's a nice looking on. Oh, too. Nice looking car. 
it looks real short for a Corvette, but it's not like the salt is one. Well, yeah, it's stock wheelbase. You know, the, this category requires you to maintain uh, pretty close to a stock wheelbase in all these cars. So, yeah, we see a lot of pro mods with this style body, but they're about three feet longer. Is the Camaro short or long? Uh, I believe the Camaro and the Corvette are probably fairly close to the same wheelbase. I can't say off the top of my head, but if anything, I'm guessing the Camaro may be a little longer. Charlie Cooper over there from Great Meadows, New Jersey in the 2020 model year Mustang. A turbocharged Hemi. Patrick Barnhill, the tuner, helping bring him up to the tree as Woody sits by his lonesome on the left side, and here comes Cooper now. Great side-by-side -side race, and it's Cooper. 379 beats a 377. It's a whole shot win. Charlie's 48 green to Woodruff 78. Did we just talk about nobody's won by a whole shot? First one of the day. You did it. First one of the day. Woody, a great run at 77.6, but by 11 thousandths of a second, Charlie Cooper wins the drag race because he left the starting line first. The slower 379 beats a quicker 377. So Jason Collins and Eddie Harrison coming up right now. Well, we got Jason Collins rolled up here, number two. Qualified, Florida Venetia, number seven, qualified. On paper, number two should be number one. But they're not racing on paper. Ultra Street, you should be in the lanes, please. Ultra Street, you should be in the lanes with the rest of your radial tire brethren. Jason Collins is not a guy I want to see ever at all on a weekend. But eventually, you're probably going to have to race him to win in this category. Now it's Eddie Harrison's turn to try to take down a guy who is in a car that looks almost unbeatable at times. Well, is that one of those top two we're racing? It is. And I've gone along saying he would pay anybody a bounty if he could not all stop two. And it's, it is possible. Payable in Cheeto cheese. A bucket of Cheeto cheese. Yeah, generally speaking, running over your crew is a bad idea. Maybe the radio wouldn't work. Yeah. Like the guy the other night. The radio, he had it on, but it wouldn't work. Wouldn't hook up. So Eddie Harrison on the right side begins to advance his cause here. This would be a huge win for the team out of Ackworth, Georgia, if they could stop Collins, the proprietor of Alabama International Raceway in Steel, Alabama. They're having a problem trying to get the door latched on the side of Collins' car. Brandon Stroud's like, no, nah, that's good. I got you. Well, good. We start keeping some Gorilla tape in it. Gorilla tape in the pocket. And just run down and slap us and keep on going. Chris Terry Race Cars Build Machine. Why is Stevie Fast out there paying a lot of attention to it? Stevie Fast is out there on the starting line. Why? Because one of his his car that he tunes is back there coming soon. Henderson's car is back there. Oh, oh Chad Henderson. Yeah. Bad, bad man. Bad man. Okay, here we go. As Jason gets ready to stage that thing in the right spot to make sure he gets some maximum grip and go down the racetrack. And Collins, 379 at 203 miles an hour. Harrison's car. Traction gave way immediately, so Eddie Harrison is eliminated by Jason Collins. We have now put two cars ahead, Cooper and Collins, in to the semifinal. And that's shipping up to be one great semifinals with all those great fast cars and fast times and everything, so it should be one hell of a semifinals coming up. Brian McGee and Marcus Burt going to be coming up next. Each team kind of surveying their spots on the starting line where they're going to want to put the race car to launch it. For Jason Collins, that 379 puts him in that same neighborhood as the performance we saw to Charlie Cooper, who's 79, beat the 77 on a whole shot of Woodruff on the first pair. McGee now and Marcus Burt. Here comes Burt and the Mustang, owned by Tommy Yeoman. Well, the one thing they both got in common, they're, they're both about 5'5". Five, five. Ooh, a little smoke coming out the right side over there. It's actually kind of neat. With these two cars, you have a 67 Mustang and an 03 Mustang We're in the same paint scheme. So you kind of see, too, uh, how the Mustang design of, evolved over the years with the identical paint schemes on them. Silver, kind of that gunmetal gray with the black stripes. Two beautiful cars. 
Of course, you, McGee, the big nitrous engine. Did you see that hat, that hat, that hat delete when they run by? The hat delete. The hat delete. <laughs> Hats just flying over. Yeah, that hat delete there. Yeah. So better time down. Now he's holding his hand on to make sure he don't go nowhere this time. Got to put a chin strap on that thing for the next round. All right. So Brian McGee's car, that is a steel roof and quarters car. That is amazing. P. Long, South Carolina. I heard somebody say P. Lion last night. It's P. Long. <laughs> Guess who said that? The same guy who was called to Aceworth, Georgia. <laughs> that was me. And it wasn't me. I am Tucci. Yeah. yeah. It's Big Al. Yeah. That's Brian McGee. Big time refrigerator man. Air conditioned man. Okay, HVAC guy, Carolina. yeah. Yes. Mm -hmm. But I'm against Marcus Burke. They are personal friends, though. These guys are personal friends. They race each other all the time in the no time categories also. That's how you have the better rivalry sometimes, right? The guys are... Maybe hit the golf course every once in a while, but when they get in the race cars, they try to tear each other's throats out. Here we go, McGee's pre-stage. They don't usually play golf together because neither one of them is tall as the clubs. <laughs> Man, it looks like it might be Burt's. No, it was Burt's race to lose, and he lost it. Brian McGee, 378, 3 at 199, puts him ahead to the next round. Marcus Burt was starting to motor away from McGee, and then he had to get off the throttle. It was a little smoke was coming out that right side. Yeah. Like something that might have been eating itself up on that run. Right they there. had an issue earlier in the weekend on the left side of the motor. They fixed that one. And the right side, the last couple of runs, some smoke had been emanating there. And you're right, it might have finally gone away for him. But Marcus Bird eliminated. Brian McGee moves into the semifinal. And that just goes to show you, you never can tell. you got to race the racetrack. you got to win it on the racetrack. You never know who's going to win it. It's anybody's race to win. And we have seen now two 79s and a 78 advance. It is going to be very, very tight when we get to that final four. They ran next to each other in every round of qualifying. They rode with each other all the way up from Bakers, Cal Bakersfield, California. They got the same last name. Father and son, Roger Holder and Brylin Holder. Yeah, they have scheduled their they have scheduled their meeting two rounds too early, as ideally you do in the final, but they ended up on the same side of the ladder, so be it. Brylin Holder from Bakersfield. And Roger Holder, of course, from the same town. Holder, uh, contractor out there. Drives sprint cars on the West Coast and goes drag racing on the East Coast. Holders AC and heating, Holders Mechanical, Lions Custom Motorsports, and Holder Motorsports, the family race team. And Roger is going to be the first to place himself ahead of pre-stage. Pretty great to see the family out here not only racing together, but also competing at this high a level and... Going deep in the rounds. One of the two going to the semifinal. Brylin did qualify ahead of his father, but only by 13 thousandths of a second. Oh, the old man. The old man just took it to the woodshed off the starting line. It is going to be a whole shot victory for Roger Holder. 24 light to Brylin, 66. A 79 beats a 78, and that means we've had three 79s and a 78 enter the semifinal round. All four cars separated by less than a hundredth of a second. We need no time cars to the staging lanes right now, please. But we need our truck final, and then cars just fall in behind the trucks. Trucks first for their final, and then no time cars right behind them. Man, what a round. What a round of Pro 275. So your semifinal round will be Charlie Cooper, Jason Collins, Brian McGee, and Roger Holder, the final four in Pro 275.
We need our no time truck final and right behind it, once again, no time trucks first. That's the final round of then our no time cars behind the trucks. Charlie Cooper, you knocked the tree down and just got there. That's what it seems. In other words, it seems like we just made it. We got on a whole shot. Um, hopefully, we got a little more for the next guy. Well, you know, if you can't get it down underneath the hood, get it down with the finger of the foot. I was scared of that right lane, but it worked. Charlie Cooper and his team moving on to the next round. Jason Collins, you just keep, you know, hanging around like a hair in a biscuit. <laughs> yeah, yeah um, you know, crew's doing their job. I mean, they reading the track, seeing what it'll take. I mean, who knows exactly what it would have took there. I mean, I know they made an adjustment right there after I'd done a burnout. Uh, they made an adjustment there. So uh, I guess it was the right call. I mean, we're going on the next round. And I uh, want to say hi to my buddy Chance. Hey, buddy. He's been sick at home with the flu, so uh, he's not feeling real hot. So I just figured I'd tell him hi. I hope he gets feeling better. Well, well, Chance, we're going to see if he does something to give you a reason to feel a little better. I hope so. I hope so. Jason Collins going on the next round.
but they are the number 12 and number 13 qualifiers, so that should be one heck of a toss them up race then. It really should. I mean, and, and being down now, as we keep cutting this field in half, we got eight of these cars left. Uh, you're down to the, whenever you get down to those single digit numbers in any field, it just gets so, so tight. You see Stevie Fast running a little extra fuel through the top of the motor there using the squirt bottle and the injector hat. And that's a way just to keep things cool. You introduce that extra fuel, it flows down through the supercharger, and alcohol does a good job of uh, removing heat from the air when it's kind of flowing through there. So, I always thought it was because it was freezing up or something. They were defrosting. Well, they'll use defrost. But you saw when he was idling, Stevie Fast had the bottle of fuel that he was just kind of squirting into the top of the blower. And, again, it just helps on a momentary basis keep the temperature from rising too quickly. All right, guys, here we go. Chad Henderson going up against... My man Rob Doss, this should be one heck of a run right here for both of them if they both go Wow, great side-by-side -side pass to 330, and it's going to be Rob Goss. 389 beats a 392, and those guys finally found what they have been seeking the entire race. Rob Goss we had the wheels up all yeah. the way down the track, moving over to the left lane. Expected that number out of that car really from Thursday afternoon on and they finally found it when it really counts here on Sunday. 392.7. He got around him, yeah, because Henderson was 14 thousands better on the starting line and he was 200 better to 60 feet, but by the time they got to the 330, that's when Goss started to make up some of that ground. He was 100th better there and he ends up being three numbers better purely at the eighth mile, but if we count for reaction time, it was a 15 thousandths margin of victory favoring Rob Goss. A great drag race, best run that Henderson made all weekend, and certainly the best run that Rob Goss made all weekend. All right, so as of right now, we had a little rain. The, the track had to be scraped. Uh, what's the condition of the track? Listen. What's the condition of the track? Yes, sir. You know, You're going to stand here and look me in the eyeballs yes, and ask me the condition of the track after you just said Rob Goss's car was on the back wheels the whole time. I just to be what's right. the condition of the track, Willie? Well, I want you you to tell me what the condition of the track is. Outstanding. Outstanding. Willie, you answered your own question. I'm proud of you. I just Somebody texted me talking about how the track is, and so they can't see you. They was asking. How the track is. <clears throat> Greg Blevins, Jr. and Jamie Hancock. Well, see, Coming Jimmy, back up. You got to understand, though, just because we're experts at this and stuff, we got people out there at Flow Racing and on the TV or wherever they're watching it, and they don't understand how good this is. So I just figured if Brad tell them, if Listen, Brian not, tell not them, to quote, right. I mean, I, um, to quote Tim McCamus, uh -oh, uh -oh. if you got to ask the question of how good the track is after seeing that, you are definitely looking the windows at home. You got a point there now. Yeah. But uh, we got cardboard windows. <laughs> <laughs> Jamie Hancock and Greg Blevins. Blevins is the number one qualifier, ran down a 386. We just saw Goss lay down a 389, and we got Jamie Hancock from Alabama on the right-hand side. Nitrous outlet, Hancock performance, ASA performance, Pro Mod Pistons, m and transmissions, all part of Hancock's program, the defending series champion, Radio Outlaws and Limited Drag Radio. He's going up against the number one qualifier right now, so it's going to be a tall task to get by, but them Alabama boys are some mean characters. Yeah, Blevins has looked real good all weekend, too. It's not just... Uh, he did not just make one shot in the dark. He made every single run that he has made so far count. Whoa. And again, he's making this one count. Hancock's car spins. Blevins goes in 89. But Hancock tattooed him off the starting line. He did. He tattooed left him. 007. 007. Hancock, Hancock just about shot the bulbs out of the tree, but he lost traction very early. Blevins, on the other hand, another 389 at 195 miles an hour. So that gives us, uh, if you want to seat at the cool kids' table at, the, at lunch, 389 is a spot you want to land in. Well, since you're so smart and I don't know all this stuff, what's the difference between brunch and lunch? <laughs> the difference is, the difference is about, about I was going to say, about 20 bucks. Yeah, about 20 bucks. All right, here we go. Back to back to real TV. Shane Stack and Steve Halprin. Halprin up from Michigan. He's going to try to do what his fellow Michigander Blevins just did and go to the next round, the semifinal. And Shane Stack uh, from Alabama going to try to do what Hancock couldn't and win his round. Well, old Shane Stack, the gentle giant, a.k.a. what they call him then? The Thrill Billy. Billy. The Thrill Billy. No time cars. We need no time cars to the lanes, please. No time cars.
So Shane Stack and Steve Halperin, and just talking off mic here with Willie, he brings up a good point that we haven't really talked about. We had that rain this morning, and that rain was a cold front coming in, the edge of the front. It's only 63 degrees out here right now. So, yeah, we got a bunch of sunlight on this racetrack, but we're talking about these cars picking up performance or making some of their best runs of the weekend. There's a lot of air to work with out there. That air is dried out. It is cooled off. So does it run the tuners crazy? Do the tuners go crazy? The tuners go crazy because they make more power for sure. Man, stack was off and gone, and then the car faltered. 4.09 at 184. Steve Halperin heads to the semis for Shane Stack at 088 light, which gave him almost 600s advantage. Goes by the wayside when the nose of the car dipped before the 330. Well, Brian, we was talking about more power. Is it is it easier for a tuner to, to handle more power or less power to work with? Which is the best one to work with? Well, in a racetrack like this, the honest answer to me is like this thing will, to some degree, take as much as you can throw at it. Right. Uh, relatively speaking, right? I think I think as good as this surface is, what Wade and his entire crew have done to maintain it so well, on a less on a less sticky racetrack, with this good air, I think they have nightmares. But with a tra track this good, you have maybe a little bit bigger window to tune Throw it. Him. Throw it at them. Throw it at them. Yeah. Throw it at them. Okay. Okay. Here we go. Larry Salvatore out of Denver, Illinois, will be going up against my man Carlton Thompson out of Florida. That's my main man. This should be a pretty good race. Carlton Thompson is a native Florida Indian. So he is from Tallahassee up there in the Panhandle. Most definitely. He switched over uh, from grudge racing. Fortunately, no Thompson racing. unable to make the call, so it will be a competition single for Salvatore. And, and that think, puts limited drag radial. And I think Salvatore is a new one. Yeah, I think he just come out the last couple of seasons. Last couple of seasons, yeah. yeah. Car, uh, Car's yeah. been around a couple of years. He bought it a few seasons ago, continues to work with Steve Summers, and continues to run like the wind. Rob Goss is in the semis. Greg Blevins is in the semis. Halpern's in the semis, and we know Larry Salvatore is as well. Let me tell you something about Larry Salvatore you might not know. Guess what he said he wanted to do? He said he wanted to run no time also with the same car. I said, no, we can't have yeah. you. He's showing the numbers. You can't do it. So he said, okay, I'll stay there. That's my man. I see uh, David Reese out there walking the starting line like he always do to check things before his race. He got a tough one coming up against Austin Pruitt. That is one to be able to see two of the fastest cars out here. But right now, by run by Larry Salvatore. Will this run put him in the semifinals? Yes, it will. Oh, and it'll do so quickly. 396, six at 193 with either a pedal or the wheelie control coming in early. So that run, let's say it was a 94, 93 without any of the interruption he had early. Either way, a competitive effort by Larry Salvatore. Going to touch the racetrack up very quickly and then move in to the X275 category. Thank you to Cali's Performance and Energy Manufacturing for sponsoring Limited Drag Radio this weekend. Cali's Performance, whether it's blocks, whether it's crankshafts, whether it's connecting rods or camshafts, Cali's Performance has you covered for the bottom end of your next engine. You can check them out online at calisperformance.com and Energy Manufacturing leading the aftermarket industry with some of the highest technology manufacturing practices, highest quality products. You can find Energy Manufacturing and Cali's Performance, our sister companies. You can follow Energy Manufacturing and Cali's Performance across the Internet and social media. Look them up and shop them next time you are in the market for high-performance parts or pieces to anchor your next engine. Well, it had a little Mustang on Mustang crime right there, but the nitrous car took care of it. Yep, yep. He got me last year, same race. So I was, I was hoping the outcome would be different this year, and it is. Uh, so I'm, I'm happy. Did you remind him in the staging lanes that you owed him one? No, I didn't. I didn't. I want to mess with him. He's a good, uh, he's a good BSer. So I, I didn't want to get him to get under my skin, <laughs> or you know, get under my feelings. So anyway, uh, it worked out good. 
All right, well, go turn your car around because guess what? Going to the third round. When you're going to semifinals. Semifinals, yep. I'll see you next round. All right, thank you. <laughs> Brian McGee and the Mustang, Nitrous, heading on to the next round. And I'll tell you, folks, stay tuned for the next interview. Father, son. Mr. Holder, you said last night that the best time and the only time that counts is in the finals, and uh, you just ran the scoreboard up on your kid. Well, I only got a few left in my older age. I'm going to have to pass the torch to him sooner or later, so I need to get in what I can get in now. Well, that's one way of saying you just spanked his tail. <laughs> well, I'm the dad. I got to teach him the ropes, don't I? Oh, you definitely taught him the ropes. You're 24 up front. <laughs> Well, that's all I figured I had. We were kind of guessing at what the car would do that time, and I knew I needed everything I could get at the light. So, And he's normally, I mean, that's a good light, 66, not bad. That'll, that'll get you home most of the time, but I knew I needed more. So was there any conversations last night, a little fun ribbon before heads hit the pillow, saying, hey, when you, when you say your prayers tonight, you know, go ahead, go ahead and ask you for another one. I mean, was there anything involved in there? You know, it's hard. I, I don't, it's not a, it's a weird feeling. I want to outrun my kid, right? I mean, I want to win, obviously, but to outrun my kid is not the greatest feeling in the world. But I'm competitive, and I want to do what it right, and that means win. So that's what we did. But now I don't like to poke at him or, you know, just let it, let it go. Whatever happens, happens. All right, well, I'm going to get your kid over here because I want him to poke at you. All right, you're moving on to the semifinals. We'll see you next round. I appreciate you guys. Thank you. <laughs> Mr. Holder, he's going on to the semis. Let's get his kid in here. All right, Brylan, I was going to bust your chops, but then you come over here and you brought your kids for the interview. I can't really be mean to their dad in front of them. I, I think that you took the high road on me. You kind of got off there. But, I, but again, that being said, you're standing here, you're holding your two kids, and you get to race with your dad. You got you a big family. I know that's not the way you wanted to go out this weekend, but if you're going to lose to somebody, I think losing to your dad's pretty cool. Yeah, I, I mean, definitely if I want to lose to someone, it's going to be him. Uh, hopefully he moves on to the finals and wins this whole thing. Um, I can't thank him enough, him and my mom, you know, giving me the opportunity to race and uh, Lion Custom Motorsports and, um, you know, everyone that's involved and Spencer and uh, my wife, Lindsay, uh, she supports me, you know, dearly. So, and both my kids and <laughs> um, I can't thank everyone enough. Did you lay back a little bit off of the button? Because your dad ain't been driving over the tree lately, if you're looking at numbers. Did you did you slack up a little bit to figuring you had a little bit of room and didn't want to go red? What's going to be your story? Well, that's part of it. Uh, Trying not to make excuses, but one thing with my car, um, on the right lane, i got to lean my head over to see the tree. So I'm not making an excuse, but it was harder to see the tree, so that might have been the problem. We'll see you. Lights out? Yes, sir. The Holder Group, they're still going on to the semis family affair over here just one other characteristic about drag racing that we love stay tuned u.s street coming up
All right, so Mearing, Underwood completing their burnouts. The next 275 action. Once again, eight cars remain. Shortly to be four. So Mearing now rolling ahead. Underwood, his crew guy just about glued to the racetrack himself. He was able to get his foot out of there. Halfway home on both sides now. Round two in X275. The two turbo cars spooled up. They both launched. They both stick. Mearing had to pedal the race car out of a wheel stand. It's going to be Underwood. The no, Mearing caught him. Wow. 425.6 with a pedal at 174 miles an hour for Mark Mearing. Grady Underwood runs 426.4 at 167. And you can't tell me at some point when Underwood saw the front end of Mearing's car come up, he might have thought to himself, this might be mine. And then he looked back over and Mearing drove around him. That was unbelievable. Ne never lift until you see Man. the light come on. Never lift until you see the light come on. All the respect to Mearing on that one. A brilliant driving job of settling that car down and getting it to the stripe first. Ron Rhodes and Sean Lyon. Rhodes out of Townsend, Delaware, the famed red Camaro. The 640 cubic inch nitrous combination. A car that is well known, well loved, and in many ways well feared in the world of X275 competition. Sean Lyon from Panama City, Florida, the 1989 Mustang that has been around since the beginning, if you will, of this style of drag racing. And maybe even before that. Ron Rhodes worked on the engine, worked on the chassis, worked on his motorhome, and worked on his generator, and now he's working on another round win. Red light start for Lyon. Ron Rhodes, a free trip into the semifinals. He goes 19 just to prove a point at 175 miles an hour as Sean Lyon goes 429-2 in the losing effort. Lyon knew he needed about a tenth, and he was about a tenth early, so I give him credit for that. <laughs> All things being equal, if we could do the math, we kind of come out even, kind of come out even money here. Uh, that's just not how the sport works. But for Ron Rhodes, a 4.19.9, very well done. And Eric LaFerrier out of Cumberland, Rhode Island. Jordan Brandon out of Edmonton, Alberta, Canada. We talked about this young man, the pride of a city, thousands of miles away from the one we're in right now. Guy who has built this car from a street car that he drove through the oftentimes rough and tumble Canadian winter as a kid. Had a vision for what he wanted it to be and has methodically brought it to that point. Now he gets to be on the same racetrack as one of the nastiest cars to ever apply the trade in X275, the machine known as White Rice. LaFerrier out of Rhode Island, of course, the car owner and team out of Texas. For Jordan Brandon, Milron Truck Bodies, Casey Mechanical, Horsepower Solutions. The company's helping his multi, multi-thousand mile journey down here to Bradenton, Florida to compete with the best in the world in X275. Brandon just put a crush job on him on a starting line. LaFerrier's car skates around. It's still LaFerrier. 4-13-2. 182 miles an hour. Jordan Brandon put five hundreds, nearly six hundreds, on Eric LaFerrier. And let Eric beat him by 23 thousandths. A 4-21 for Brandon, outperforming his qualifying time by seven hundreds. Heroic effort there, but Eric LaFerrier had too much hot rod to be stopped. Man, he had 700s on him at 60 feet. <laughs> Frank Misha and Ryan Milliken. Final pair in X275. So Misha and Milliken. 
Both Floridians, of course. Two very different ways to make the power. We know the story on Milliken's car, the Cummins diesel plant. Misha's Mustang, the car owned by Terry from Cascade Locks, Oregon. So an Oregon-based car owner, Florida-based driver. Last and final call, limited 235. Last and final call, limited 235 to the lanes, please. Finish this pair of the Ultra Street quarterfinals will begin right behind him in a water box. Milliken's car blows the tires off as the suspension seemed to top out quickly, and Misha goes 4.18.9 at 174 miles an hour, printing those high 14 tickets, and he will move on as the fourth member of the semifinals. It will be Mearing, Rhodes, LaFerrier, and Misha. Winners coming from both sides of the drag strip out there. Plenty of racetrack for everybody to work with. The Ultra Street quarterfinal begins right now with Ray Cox and Brian Keep. Both cars reporting for duty. Ultra Street, always a part of the Snowbird Outlaw Nationals. Sponsored this weekend by the folks at Motion Raceworks and TRZ Motorsports. The Pontiac Raycox from Davenport, Florida, and Brian Keefe from Fort Myers roll in. So the 413 that just came to fruition out there is the new record for X275. And a big thanks there. Thank you, Barrett, on the update there for the info. That 413, you just out of Eric LaFerrier's car, is the X275 record for now. We'll find out what he does next round. Ray Cox and Brian Keep. Brian Keeps car is still way beyond, uh, kind of behind the staging area. He's not moved up in a moment, and now he's moving ahead. Ray Cox has been set up. Again, justified to the left side of the groove. Now, the left tire is in the shiny stuff. The right tire is in the more dulled out area, but more kind of well-trafficked part of the center of the lane. With the radio prep, does it make a difference on the radio prep? We're about to find out. Working good for Ray. Ray Cox goes to the semifinals. 450 at 153 miles an hour for Brian Keep. Hit the gas and watch Ray Cox simply drive away. So Ray Cox heads on to the semifinal round. Paul Birchall and Sean Pebler coming up next now. Pebler from Cincinnati, Ohio. And Birchall from Baltimore, Maryland. All things being equal, no matter how much Paul Birchall loves football, he does not want to be done with anything. He doesn't care about the Ravens game right now. Loses this round, he can catch this. He can almost catch kickoff. <laughs> you read my mind. I was just going to say he could make it. He'd make the kickoff. 
But uh, I would say this, uh, even though his crew guy is wearing a Ravens jersey, I think they'd rather be occupied here this afternoon than catch the highlight reel on the way home than watching the broadcast at a Ravens game. With a little jingle jingle in your pocket also. That's a little jingle jingle <laughs> that's in right. your pocket. So Sean Pebbler's there in the pre-stage beam. Paul Burchill dives all in. And Burchill goes 076 red on the right-hand side of the drag strip. 025 green for Pebbler, 451, 145. He continues on. Jamie Coulter. Jesse Coulter on the right side, and Billy Smith left side. Coulter with that bright red 91 Camaro. Billy Smith, the entirely blacked out 2006 Mustang. Billy Smith and Jesse Coulter. Coulter, the multi-time NMCA champion. One events from one corner of the country to the next in that little red Camaro. Not this one. Billy Smith's 048 green and takes it to the house. 452.9 at 160. So final pair of Ultra Street cars in the water box right now. Quick cleanup of the old racetrack after this pair. And then our first final of the race. We have our no time truck final coming. After Ultra Street. All right, so now James Tall. Alex Hayes now coming up.
So Alex Hayes, 585 cubic inch, naturally aspirated combination built by Mid-South Racing Engines. Ian down there, well known for his high winding NA power plants. Tall purging the nitrous out of his 2002 Camaro now. All right, both cars ready to run. Tall goes right in, rolls in, sets both bulbs on. The big wheelie for Alex Hayes, and Hayes is powering down, but it's going to be James Tall. 454, 254 miles an hour. Tall goes to the semifinals. A 460, 43 at 151 for Hayes with that pretty awesome looking wheel stand right there in the middle of the run. So Alex Hayes is eliminated, and Tall goes on to the final four in Ultra Street. And that will bring us a quick touch up of the racetrack before the no time truck final. And then we'll go into our no time car eliminator. Winning doesn't just happen. You have to engineer it. You have to test it and make it better than it was the last time. Our engineers have the passion to create the parts you need the way you need them to be. Again, and again, and again. We've led this game for over 40 years, and we design, refine, and perfect every valve train part worthy of the winner's circle. It's all about feel, and this car I love this car, but not when it hesitates. So I was looking for better performance. That's why I went with an Edelbrock AVS2 carburetor. No hesitation. The Edelbrock warranty. Great throttle response. Now when I punch it, <laughs> it moves. Edelbrock, charge forward. Unleash your engine with Adrenaline Racing Oils, 100% PAO base oil. The Adrenaline R Series is designed to unlock extra horsepower. Free up your engine to perform its best. Top performing oils with FR3 nanocarbon technology. The same friction reducer used by top racers. Designed for any engine. Lab formulated, dyno tested, track proven. Hot shot secret, powered by science. Winning doesn't just happen. You have to engineer it. You have to test it and make it better than it was the last time. Our engineers have the passion to create the parts you need the way you need them to be. Again, and again, and again. We've led this game for over 40 years, and we design, refine, and perfect every valve train part worthy of the winner's circle. We drive tech. We drive the industry. Going beyond the limits and advancing forward. A versatile all-in-one solution. We're here for you every step of the way. And that's why you see Fuel Tech everywhere. Filters, fueling champions.
Rob Goss, you're moving on. You, you came into the week. I mean, we started, like, it seemed like your car, you guys were trying to figure out how to do a burnout. Yeah. Everything's been changed, and now here you are, 389.8. That's a, that, was a, that was a good pass for us. We, we uh, worked on our tune-ups all week, started out on Monday here, getting the car ready, and then uh, started out making 50-foot hits, 60-foot hits, 100-foot hits, 150. Finally, at the last qualifier, we made a full pass, and then we've just been working at it, working at it, working at it, checking plugs. Uh, making sure we're not hurting things. We did a lot of work to the car over the winter. We had uh, a lot of tore up parts last last race season, and uh, we couldn't 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 go rounds doing that. You know, we'd have a performance and then it would blow up, or we'd hurt something and couldn't compete again. So we did some we did we did everything we needed over winter. It appears like you know, it's starting to show a little progress, a little promise. So we'll see what the next round brings. If this 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 LDR class is a bunch of headhunters out here. This, these and the, the cars are so dang nice. Like I, we were talking about in the lanes, like, good God, there's not, you know, one car here that isn't just a show car quality, and then the performance is right there to back them up, and the drivers are all great. This heads-up radio racing is awesome. Yeah, there's all kinds of junk in the stage lanes. Yeah, it's so terrible. I mean, might as well just haul it off right now. Dicker Auto Savage probably help us out with that. <laughs> Rob Goss, Rob Goss is heading on to the next round. Chad Henderson, my friend, you just came out on the wrong side of a good run in L LDR. I mean, so far in the round, that's one of the toughest passes here. You got out of the car, you said, man, I needed to be 20 there instead well, of 30. You know, anytime you face Goss, Nim, you know, uh, you better be ready, which it don't matter. I mean, we come out this thing, and y'all, the bump, I think, of 16 cars was a 401. Seriously? You know, so it's any man's game, that's for sure. Chad, you got to be pretty happy. You've had uh, let's just let's just say you've been on the struggle bus for a couple of years, and now you're starting to really perform every run and, and making consistent laps. Do you, does this give you a boost of confidence going into lights out, or are you ready just to get back on a tractor? Oh no, no. We I mean we're gonna get on track rest for dang sure. But the thing is, like man, we've got so many people on board. You know, Chuck and Haley, the All Star Pro Services come on board. You know, KTRs. You know, kind of full time in the pit now. You know, that's a big deal. That's a big deal. You should have seen the shit I got from Amazon. You know, and uh, you know, we got a lot. You know, Agri Liquid, Henderson Farms. I mean, I could just keep naming them. MacFab. You know, I mean, we got a bunch of people. Motion Raceworks. We got all these folks behind us. Y'all just hang in there. I promise you, hang in there. We're gonna show up and show out. This is just the first. I promise you that. But we gonna make these fools show their hand. Ain't no more sandbagging going on. <laughs> Why? He got the farmer had to throw in the sandbagging. Chad Henderson and the Buick. Moving on in LDR in 2024. All right, guys, coming up, we got our finals in the no-time truck category. The little El Camino of Randy Cork. I can't say his last name, but Cork. I just call him Cork. Going up against Rick, the runner-up of the Snowbird Nationals. No-time trucks are coming on around into the water box, getting ready for the finals. This is the finals. This is the finals of the no-time trucks. We got Raymond Korkowski. Out of Tequesita, Florida, the little El Camino, nice looking El Camino. He'll be going up against Michael Ritt out of uh, Arizona. That was good. Yeah. I like the way you hung on that. Oh, you ran through your Rolodex yes, of state. Yes, you ran through yes, your Rolodex yes, of state yes, of yes. <laughs> But also, you know that Michael is also the, is the uh, runner up to the Snowbird Champion last yes. year. And now he's running in the finals of the No Time Trucks. All right, so Korkowski, the El Camino. Some would debate whether is it a car, is it a truck. We have labeled it a trar, but it fits. It's there. It's in. In memory of Danny Palm Jr. and Jim Marino, that uh, that is why Korkowski races this truck. 
But, man, Reek's truck has just been gnarly. And, and uh, Jared Ring's truck, the diesel Dodge, to me was – the other kind of truck I was looking at all weekend is thinking maybe this is probably the odds-on favorite. Jared Ring. Yeah, Jared those two Ring, guys, yeah. Jared Ring's truck and Michael Reek's truck were both, again, it's no time. I can't see numbers. We can just watch them. They were both consistent and very fast looking down the racetrack. But it's gonna be, this should be a very interesting race with these trucks here, and they're running for a whole lot of cookies. One of the neat things about Reek's truck, when you look at it, you know, we are, you see a lot of pickup trucks, and obviously you got to run the down bars at a roll cage somewhere, but the fact that the number of bars that thing has coming out of the top of the cab built real stiff, right? You see a lot of times you just have the two crossbars coming down. There is six pieces of chromoly tubing coming out of the back of the cab. Since you said that, why doesn't the El Camino have it coming out the back either? Where so it? he's got to build like a more traditional cage. Like that's on the same, It's a, I don't know if it's a full tube chassis or what, oh, but those yeah. El Camino's are on the same chassis as you'd right, find a Chevelle right. or anything else. So you can okay. build the inside of that thing a little bit different than a pickup truck. Okay, I got you. Okay, well, we're finna see what they're gonna do then. Two bad, bad guys going at it right now for the, this is the finals. This is the finals of the pro truck in no time. Brought to us by Larry Jeffers Race Cars, who built Mike Reek's truck over there. So Reek's now pre-stage. Korkowski's not screwing around. He's all the way in the final round of no time truck. Oh. Oh, man, he coasted he to coasted a win to out it. there. Reek's truck was out of power at about 500 feet. Yes. Korkowski did not have enough gusto to catch him. We thought he might be doing a little grudge action to just housing the gas on him. You know? No, no, no. Yeah, he was <laughs> he, he was housing the gas, except it wasn't attached <laughs> yeah, yeah, to anything yeah, yeah, anymore. Yeah, yeah, he was patting, hoping to keep going. Yeah, patting, he was housing his rosary beads for the last 150 feet of that run. So is that unique? He misses out on the finals or the championship of the Snowbirds and come back and win the U.S. Streets. Championship. I'll tell you what, it's great for him, man. Two final round appearances in one weekend and being able to close the second one up for a $7,500 payday in the no truck or the no time truck category. We have called 750 index to the lanes for pairing. We need 650 index to the lanes for pairing now down to the small numbers as we go straight into no time car. And everybody's favorite Floridian, Justin Swanstrom, rolls into the water box. You said everybody? I, I, I'm, I'm at it. <laughs> I, conducted, I conducted a poll of one Floridian named Corey Swanstrom, and he said, yes, okay, well, he is my favorite, favorite guy yeah, in the state. Favorite. Well, anyway, uh, Corey Swanstrom coming Your over. Your mileage may vary. From the no prep area, coming over into the no time. And the guys uh, want to thank our, uh, what is his name, Stravinas, for introducing him into the no time again. Yeah, Mike Stravinos, uh, a, a, a grudge win. A $40,000 one-hit grudge race on Friday night became a very profitable enterprise for Mike Stravinos. Brandon Kersey comes up, and again, if you've not been following the story this weekend, that is the Fletcher Cox Radio vs. the World car that Kersey now has his hands on, and they have finally started visually leaning on that thing. I say that again because I don't see the numbers. For those of you watching at home that think we see anything up here, we don't. But you watch this car and how it's been moving all weekend long. The last run it made last night, visually appear to be the quickest run it had made all weekend. Swanstrom's car, the big screw-blown motor in it, his father standing behind it. They work together to tune this thing. And uh, Kersey is the underdog here for sure, but we'll see what he can do on a starting line. Although he might be the underdog, we run these on the track. And if you make a good run here, you never know. Yeah. You never know. Justin Swanson has been all over the place. Sometimes his reaction good, sometimes yeah. bad, sometimes fast. And uh, like I say, he's just not dialing that car in from no prep. So we're going to see what he can do now. Oh! Justin Swanson goes out. No. No, no drama right there. I mean, Swanstrom just the thing hooked up and was gone. He saw the suspension work immediately, planted the tire. There was nothing much to worry about there for Kersey. The, the starting line, he left a set of fingerprints about three feet off the starting line. It was spinning the tire the second he hit the gas. Well, we're not tech talk people, but now his car didn't even try to move. What was that? Now they, couldn't have been that bad of a tune up. Any number of factors, move. let's say. Any number yeah. of factors. All right. There's only one good thing that can ever happen in these cars when you hit the gas. <laughs> it happened to Swanstrom. It didn't happen for Kersey. David Reese and Austin Pruitt coming up next. Pruitt's a guy that may have enough in the tank to stand in the ring with Justin Swanstrom and a few of the other high-level premier no-time cars here this weekend as we once again need 650 index cars to the staging lanes. 650 index cars. We need you to the lanes, please. 
Well, this is the matchup everybody. Oh wants man, to are you kidding me? These are the matchup right now. Whoa, baby, yes. yeah, this is the this is yes. the heavy duty David stuff Reese, right here. David Reese with the Bagagoo, whatever he called his car, going up against Austin Pruitt. They went from yeah. Quadra Jets to 750 Hollis to Dominators. Now they got rooster heads over here and over David Reese's car. And David Reese said he's putting a hammer down on everybody he come up against. But we're going to see right now. Listen, this guy. Austin Pruitt might have something for him. Yeah, I'll tell you what. Reese has shown no mercy so far to anybody that he has run across in this car. But, man, Austin Pruitt. Austin Pruitt may be one of those guys that he has to think twice about out there. I don't. We need Outlaw 632. Outlaw 632 semifinal to the lanes. All right, I predict whoever wins this race wins the whole shenanigan. Whoever wins this race, I predict wins the whole shenanigan. We'll find out in a minute, though. Corey Swanstrom thinks that they lined the car too far over the left. He was just motioning to his guys that he would have gone like this. Kind of interesting, his take on it. Oh, talking about big country? Yeah, he was. he's just looking on and kind of taking the surveying oh, the situation. Okay. He kind of looked at where they set the car up. Reese's car is set up slightly to the outside of the groove. They're using that left-hand part of the groove versus Pruitt's car, which is centered up on the right side of the racetrack. This is going to be a classic here. This is the big one right here. Screw blower for Pruitt. Going to make that big top end move, but it is rather turbos for Pruitt, screw blower for Reese. Oh! Look. Reese takes it after he did, goes in deep. He almost started away on the red light. He went in in deep stage. Listen, there was a dramatic moment in that Woo! race, and that, and then it was over when he, they hit the gas. The dramatic moment was when he deep staged, and then two seconds later he hit the gas and then just his leash walked, that, threw it down the racetrack. Does that make you hold up on your reaction time? Oh. Yeah. Yeah. For normal human beings, it probably would, but Reese is, Reese is not like the rest of us, apparently. He went out there and just squashed them. So David Reese moves on to the next round, which would be a round of five cars in the no-time category. Now it is Mike Wackeser, or Wackeser, I should say, the Category 5 Chevy 2, and Bill Rollo out of Cross Lake, Minnesota. Cowboy hat still on his crew guy down there. We call that, we call that, there was a Minnesota, what we call that, the Minnesota snow shovel? We're, like, if we're a cowboy hat in Minnesota, it's like doubles as a shovel. It's not a 10-gallon hat, it's a two-scoop hat. You clear yep. your walkway with it. Same hat, same shirt, same shoes. Same smell from all the way up here. I didn't want to say that. Yeah. <laughs> Flo has not introduced smell vision yet, clearly <laughs> only because of that guy. Right. Yeah. <laughs> All right, <laughs> Not that I know it for sure, but I'm pretty sure those jeans would stand up by themselves if he took them off, but I don't want to see that either. All right, here we go. Bill Rolo now. He's in deep. Wackeser goes in. <laughs> Red light start. Right. Exactly what we The Category exactly. 5 Chevy 2 of Wackeser just runs away from him as Rolo red lights and spins the tires. Exactly what we just said. That deep stage, you got to wait on it. You can't try to cut a double O light when you're staging in deep. Little mop job there in the starting line. Next pair fired up and around the corner. Brian Markowitz rolls in in his purple vinyl roof Chevy Nova. So as Brian Markowitz of Seminole, Florida backs up, Mike Stravinos, not here, not making the call. So that means Markowitz has a competition single. So Bar Brian Markowitz was supposed to race Mike Stravino. So we're on a ladder. This is a competition single. Next round, Brian Markowitz gets the bye. The, he's not getting two bye runs in a row. There is a difference between a competition single and a bye. A comp single is that your laddered opponent couldn't show up. A bye run is that as the draw, when you guys chip drew, he earned the bye in that third round, the way the, way the ladder shook out. 550 index, 550 index. 
Oh, man. Well, Safina just gave him a gift. That's his Christmas gift early. 550 index into the lanes for pairing. Next category up will be limited 235. After one last car runs. Looks like Paul Lucas down there in the white Chevrolet Camaro. Green and Lucas, last two. And what are we looking for for pairs? So we know Markowitz has a buy next round. So the two Florida guys, again, it's going to be a little country taking on Wackeser. And then Reese will get the winner of the buy. It's a single here because no Jack Green. So it's only, it's Paul Lucas on a cop single. Five cars left now once Paul Lucas stages his Camaro. All index cars, 7, 6, and 550 should be in the lanes or getting paired right now. 7, 6, and 550 index cars, all of you should be getting paired. Outlaw 632, you should be on the way to the staging lanes. And Pro Mod teams, you should be buttoning your stuff up because you're going to be the next class call for the semis. So Paul Lucas out of Jupiter, Florida. Final car in no time. He's also the Grudge Inc. heavyweight champion of Florida also. Paul Lucas, he will go on to the next round. He will be going on to the next round where he will be going up against David Reese. David Reese, yeah, he will not want to have what happened there happen again. He got the front end up and he could hear the wheelie control come in, set the car down and picked it up again, pulled some timing and set it down and got a little loose when it landed the second time. Quick touch of the racetrack before we get to limited 235. All the index cars should be in the lanes. The semifinal round of Outlaw 632 should be on the way. And as soon as we get those four cars, the Pro Mods will be coming right behind them.
There are two types of people in this world, and one of them is the type of guy that complains about free food. And here comes the first pair of limited 235. Am I right, Willie, or am I right? I think I might be right. Brad Shear and Eddie Ramirez coming up right now. Ramirez right side of the racetrack. Shear on the left side. Shear is trying to defend his 2023 U.S. Street Nationals title coming out of Fort Myers, Florida. And Ramirez from Sanford, Florida, 430 cubic inch. Ford small block combination on spray. Of course, a limited 235 category dependent on that tiny rear tire they have to run, just 235 millimeters wide. Very much along the same lines of an X275, but even tighter rule set and even smaller tire. Shear is the number four qualifier. Ramirez is number five. Our index cars are in. Our Outlaw 632 cars are rolling in. I believe that's time for us to make a first call for the semifinal round of Pro Mod. Eminem Transmission Outlaw Pro Modified to the staging lanes, please, as Brad Shear is pro charged. Fox Body backs its way up to the starting line. Cooler air conditions, we talked about it. These engines much happier today in terms of power making potential. The racetrack is as good as Olympically strong as it has been all week during this U.S. Street Nationals and the testing that happened earlier in the week. So Eddie Ramirez now pre-staged. Brad Shear. Takes a deep breath and then begins to roll his car into that same pre-stage position. Man, Shears guard the front end up. That might be a problem as Eddie Ramirez begins to put a nose on him. Ramirez gets the job done. 492.6 beats a 499.4. Eddie Ramirez of Sanford, Florida moves on to the semifinal round. That is Paul Anderson of Copenhagen, Denmark, and his 1978 Cadillac, 580 cubic inch combination for Anderson, and Bill Kubiak of Douglasville, Georgia. Kubiak backing up in the camouflage Mustang, which if you've gotten a close look at this car, I hope you're 18. That's all. So Kubiak made his way back, the Nelson Racing Engine powered NBS chassis car. And for Anderson. So Anderson. <laughs> Looking across the bow of that massive Cadillac hood that still contains the hood ornament like a ramming sight in the front of the car. Bill Kubiak has not yet pre-staged. Anderson second to go in. Oh man, the Cadillac's gonna do it. Anderson out of the number nine qualifying spots going to the semifinals. 498.6 at 139, the land barge hung the front end for the first 100 feet of the run, and Kubiak's car smoldered the tires early. 13-19 with a one for Kubiak, and Anderson, the man from Denmark, is going to the semifinals in limited 235, one of the great stories of the race. Louis Filipinas coming up now, and Tom Brown, Louis from Stanfield, North Carolina, by way of New York. American Racing Headers, Fark Supercars, Brian Tooley Racing, Bounty Drag Racing, and Pro Torque all involved in that really clean 86 Oldsmobile 442. And Tom Brown from Loxahatchee, Florida. It's a 2004 Mustang Cobra, 400 cubic inch Ford small block combination. So Filipinas, the number two qualifier, has a distinct performance advantage, about two tenths of a second over Tom Brown on paper, but we just saw a much wider margin than that go up and smoke in the back of Bill Kubiak's car. 
Pro Modified to the lanes, and we have our semifinal of Outlaw 632. Thank you very much, gents, for showing up for that. Final four Pro Mods to the staging lanes, please. Final four Pro Mods to the lanes. And Louis takes 300s from Brown off the starting line. Takes more than that at the stripe. 492.6 at 143. Gets three tenths ahead of Brown by the stripe. 520 at 133 miles an hour for Tom Brown in line with his previous performances this weekend. And that will bring up the final pair of limited 235 entries. Troy Perez Sr. and Dean Fluart. So Troy Perez Sr. out of Lutz, Florida, his Silver Nova, and Fluart from Jacksonville, the 1968 Mustang Coupe. There are two kinds of people in this world, 12-year-olds that drink Blue Gatorade and guys that collect Social Security and drink Blue Gatorade. <laughs> People were thanked, palms were greased. Willie is savoring his hot dog like it's a 42 ounce T-bone. That's fine, you take your time over there, do whatever you gotta do. I understand. You gotta slow, you, gotta, you don't wanna lose those teeth, man, I understand. Chew slowly, thoroughly and slowly. Full digestion, Willie, full digestion. So Perez now rolling ahead. He is living the dream, he's, he's in a comfortable chair, reclined. Eating his hot dog over there like the king of Siam. It's beautiful. It's a beautiful thing. Dean Fluart, the number three qualifier. Now Kubiak was the number one qualifier. He's out. Filipinas, the number two qualifier, advanced. Dean Fluart is sitting third right now. We'll see what Troy Perez Sr. can do here on the left-hand side. A red light start. So the number one and three qualifiers are done for, and Troy Perez out of the sixth spot goes to the semi. 5.038, shutting it off. Yeah, maybe not shutting it off early. It's just a very consistent car. Runs 08 or 09 at 139 miles an hour. And that is the shape of things in limited 235 as we go directly back in to the final six cars in 750 index to set up a semifinal round. ProMod final four to the lanes, please. ProMod final four to the lanes. It is Greg Bagnell, it is Bill Lee Jr. Royal Purple, HHP, Napa Professional Automotive Care, and Simpson Racing Products supporting Bill Lee Jr. Greg Bagnell. Bill Lee, deep stages. Greg Bagnell leaves. We go back to the 750 index here. Bill Lee had a better reaction time and a better finish to his run. 751-1 on the 750 index. He's 11th thou over. Had a 34 light, pretty good package he put together there. Greg Bagnell, 747.6, and he got there second. Now it's Mickey Pierce and Terry Lockwood. Pierce, the 82 Camaro, Lockwood, the 69 model year Camaro. So Mickey Pierce, man, he was out first. We'll see what Pierce can do at the top end. Looks like he's trailing down there. And it is going to be Pierce in a double breakout. Terry Lockwood, a huge breakout. 736-1 as Pierce goes 746-9 at 92. Final pair of 750 cars now in the starting line before we swoop back into 650. Pro Mods are starting to roll in. Thank you for answering the call. 
Pro 275, Pro 275 semifinal to the lanes. Pro 275 semifinal to the lanes, please. Pro 275 semifinal to the lanes. So now Dean Thompson will try to go to the semifinals here in 750. Final pair to take out the Tesla. Can the Nova do it? Dean Thompson is going to look over his shoulder, going to deck the brakes, and he's going to take a win. 767.5 at 74 miles an hour. Ruben Thomas and the Tesla are eliminated. Dean Thompson advances on to the final three. Faith Frost and Aaron Cole coming up. Pro 275 semifinals. Pro 275 semifinals to the lanes, please. Aaron Cole and Faith Frost. Frost, Bradenton, Florida, the Mustang Coupe. Cole, the 1973 Cuda. 440 rolling on center lines. That thing is sweet. Faith Frost, the well dragged stars on there. The debate rages. Those could actually be Craig or Super Tricks on that thing. We won't get to see him again, though. Aaron Cole missed the trade by 52 thousandths. So Faith Frost will go on to the next round, 642 at 107. Aaron Cole, 666-6 at 102 after the red light start. Andre Nunez of San Juan, Puerto Rico, coming up against Jim McMillan. McMillan of Port Charlotte, Florida, the 1989 Buick Regal. Got our Pro Mods in. Thank you for the response. Pro Modified Teams, Pro 275. We need you. Pro 275. Nunez wheel stands his way out the starting line. The truck didn't quit in the middle of the run like it did last time, but it runs too quickly as Jim McMillan, 649 at 102, beats Andre Nunez. Nunez got there first. Took a little bit too much stripe, broke out, and loses. Tony Jarvis came up here. The correct paint name, Vintage Burgundy. 1966 Mustang Vintage Burgundy paint on there. Bob Walsh, 87S10. It's an original Vintage Burgundy. It's a new Vintage Burgundy. <laughs> it's like um, Jumbo Shrimp. Yeah. We're going to get to see it again because Tony Jarvis goes and wins the round. 648-5 at 104 as Bob Walsh ran 641-2 and got there second with a 299 reaction time. Jeff Mount and Pat, Pat Nanny. Nanny, the 2000 Dakota, Mount, the 1978 Camaro. This will be the final pair in 650. Our 550 cars are in the lanes. We only have four of them left. Five of them left. It is going to be a red light start by Jeff Mount. So Pat Nanny, 16 green, dead on two. 18 pack for Pat Nanny. Jeff Mount goes a 643 with a 10 red light.
So here comes Bob Jackson into the 550 index wars with Dave Wolfen Sr. next to him. Wolfen from Tuckertown, New Jersey in his 85 Corvette, and he's going to give Jackson a fight for it. They left within just three thousandths of a second, and it is going to be Wolfen. 542 at 123 is Rob, uh, Bob Jackson. Goes 539.8. He got there first and broke out. Carl Mitchell and Eric Walkup now. Walkup from Clearwater, Florida, the 1964 Chevy 2. And Carl Mitchell, the 1978 Mercury Zephyr. Jerry Norton going to be coming up to round it out here in his roadster in a moment. Limited drag radio. Limited drag radio, we need you. Limited drag radio to the lanes, please. Walk up and Mitchell going to tangle here. Once again, a clean race with two green lights. And at the finish line, it is a 549 for Eric Walk up for a round win. Carl Mitchell. 46 light, 547.9. He got there second. It is going to be walk up heading to the round of three. Jerry Norton has the buy. 27 Ford Roadster, 540 cubic inch engine. Outlaw 632 at the ready line. We have called Pro 275 and Limited. We have called both Pro 275 and Limited Drag Radio. Jerry Norton, 544.9, 125 miles an hour. Down to the semifinals in all of our index categories now. All right, next pair up, the final four here in limited, rather an outlaw, 632. Kyle Salmonen and Jake Nauman going to be the first pair. Nauman's through the water, and Salmonen is through the water as well. And so Nauman, the shorter burnout, to a stop just past the 60-foot block. Salmon took it out a little bit further. 
Both cars are capable of running in the bottom half of the 420s. Nauman's car in that high 14 bracket. He ran in the teens again, just the first run today. Again, the cooler temperatures today allowing for bigger performances. All right, Kyle Salmonen's car is ready to go. Both cars sound really good at idle. The big 600 cubic inch engines, high compression, of course. Big camshafts sound great for that rolling, snappy idle. And Jake Nauman at the starting line advantage, and it is going to be Nauman. 421 beats a 426. Jake was 77 to Salmonen's 91. Salmonen's car was more aggressive over the first 60 feet, but after that, it was all Jake Nauman and that Nesbitt 632 making the power. So Jacob Nauman, the number one qualifier, does what a number one qualifier is supposed to do and makes his way to a final round. Chris Holdorf and Mark Hoagland will be up next. Holdorf, the number two qualifier, is going to try to turn the same trick. Holdorf's car was one of the first of the real true kind of tube chassis cars we saw in this class a few years ago. Hoagland's car is among the more cutting edge of those tube chassis cars we've seen it now. I mentioned it yesterday, but for many years, this Outlaw 632 class was really a gathering of back half style big tire cars. A lot of steel body cars competed in this class back in the day. But as all things evolve, so has Outlaw 632. Tutor Jamie Miller brings Chris Holdorf in. Mark Hogan's team does the same job, chassis engineering and FTI, supporting the Jerry Bickle chassis Camaro of Mark Hoagland. Man, oh man, Hoagland was 008 green and the car spun. Holdorf at a 164 light, probably saw his soul leaving his body as Hoagland drove away, and then Hoagland smoked the tires, and Holdorf goes to the final. Yeah, you can see it. Great point by Jimmy Owens. It started to shake the tires. Hoagland's car started to shake just a handful of feet off the starting line and then went into full-on spin. Meanwhile, Holdorf rips off a 4.15.5 at 170. Man. And just like that, it's a semifinal round of M&M Transmission Outlaw Pro Modified presented by Fuel Tech and PJS Racing. Two good burnouts. Left lane, we got Ken Quartusio coming up out of Connecticut. That Connecticut? Wallingford, Connecticut. Yeah, and Mike Decker Jr. So I like the fact that we got two East Coasters here. Got a Mid Atlantic guy, got a New England guy. X275. Limited drag radial, you should be in. X275, you should be in. For Mike Decker, kind of a 
kind of an East Coast rivalry here, really. Two of the premier cars in the category, in the region. Mentioned yesterday, Bears mentioning again, for those of you that love pro-modified cars in the New England region, those of you watching at home, the Northeast Outlaw Pro Mod Association will be coming to New England Dragway for the first time ever in this 2024 season. So for those of you that are starved for Pro Mod action up there in the Epping, New Hampshire area, this year is your chance to get there and check it out at the New England Dragway website on the calendar. Find out when you need to be up there. Mike Decker's car, personality type, is that it should be on the rear wheels at about 200 feet. It should stay there for most of the run. Ken Cretuccio's car tends to hang the front end as well. You lock up the torque converter and send 100% of the power back. The driver better hang on and have it pointed straight. Front ends up, Decker sideways. It is going to be Ken Curtuccio, 361.5 at 208 miles an hour. Decker was 362.6, but the starting line, Ken Curtuccio. Tattooed him. 12 light. Tattooed him on the start line. You could see it with your eyes. You really could. That's a visual, Willie, 100%. We've been talking about it for days. Yes. You can see, see it. When it's that big, you can see the car move. And a 922 short time for Curtuccio. Decker made a run at it, 362.6 with the front end up and the wiggle at the end. But it's Ken Curtuccio to his second straight U.S. Street Nationals final in a row. We need the Ultra Street semifinal and our radial remix cars. The four cars on radial remix, you're on standby. So we need the Ultra Street semifinal as Stan Shelton and Mark Mickey complete their burnouts. The big question here is can anybody stop Mark Mickey? The number one qualifier, been laying down now multiple speeds over 220 miles an hour. And for Stan Shelton, kind of lived up to the billing last round, had a very strong reaction time, very strong run. It is Lee White and Hank Jackson working on this car. I should say Lee White kind of leading the brain trust. I think Hank spends a lot of his time on the Kevin Rivenbark car. Rivenbark looking on as an interested member of the Culp Lumber Racing Team. For Mark Mickey, he is M&M Transmission. He is the primary sponsor of Outlaw Pro Modified this weekend. And as many would argue, the industry leader when it comes to building automatic transmissions for cars that make thousands of horsepower. Mickey made the switch to Hart's turbochargers this weekend. And they're sure looking pretty good, hanging on the sides of that Pro-Line Hemi. So Mickey now pre-staged. The turbo car going to need that time to spool, so he's going to watch what Shelton's move is here. When Shelton goes in, you'll see that process begin very quickly for Mark Mickey. Mickey goes in first. Shelton's car paddles the tire, and Mickey a 359.3, a 222.80. They're picking it up. They are picking it up speed wise. I believe that is his top speed of the meet so far. And that car also had a little had a little junk in its trunk going through the finish line down there. Shelton's car, the tires went square on it before he got past the Christmas tree. So Mark Mickey will go to the final round against Ken Curtuccio. That is going to be a throwdown. Two heavyweights going at it. Just the it, way you draw it up. It might be one on the tree. You never know. You never it know. absolutely could be. Now's the time for us to turn the racetrack around. We're going to set it up for the radial cars. They're sitting in the staging lanes. Ultra Street, you should be in the lanes. Radial Remix, the final four, you should be coming to the lanes. And when we get a little bit more real estate, we'll make a call for our remaining no-time cars. But no-time cars do not show up yet. We don't need you yet. We have a bunch of cars sitting there. So LDR should be there. X should be there. Ultra should be there. And Radial Remix. 